2017 has come to an end, and we are officially in 2018. I have to say, 2017 has been one of the best years for gaming in recent memory. Originally, this video was going to be a top 10 games of 2017, but as I sat down and made the list, I just couldn't narrow it down to 10. There were so many great games, so screw it. This is going to be my top 15 video games of 2017. Number 15, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Let's go ahead and get this one out of the way, because you know it's on every single list this year. Breath of the Wild is indeed a breathtaking game. For the first time, Link has a true open world that lets the player roam around completely free. I found myself so many times staring out in the distance just wondering, what the hell is that? Can I go over there? Exploration and discovery are the focus in Breath of the Wild, resulting in a massive experience full of side quests and collectibles that'll keep you coming back long after you've completed the main story. The only reason that it's not higher on the list is because it's far from being the best Zelda game in my opinion. As a huge fan of the series growing up and having played every single Zelda game, the lack of variety in the dungeons and the boss battles, which honestly felt like different versions of each other were a little bit off-putting to me, along with a lackluster final battle. But even with these flaws, it's hard not to appreciate this epic quest that pulls idea from Link's very first adventure on the NES, and at the same time, brought in many new fans to the series that have never played a Zelda game before. Not to mention the excellent DLC that Nintendo just recently released, that is absolutely worth paying for. Number 14, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. When deciding to put this one on the top 15 list, I was really on the fence, because technically, it isn't really a game from 2017, but a remaster of games released in another console era from the past. But they've been remastered and packaged beautifully in one collection that feels like a fresh experience. It's still the same Crash Bandicoot you know and love, collecting fruit and bouncing on crates, but built from the ground up for modern consoles with a massive upgrade in visual from the PS1 days. It's got a ramped up difficulty level, PS4 trophy support, and even a brand new stage that never even made it into the original game. Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy hits the nostalgia nerve hard and reminds us why the PlayStation brand has been so strong throughout the years. Number 13, Friday the 13th, The Game. Now let me start off by saying that this is not a perfect game at all. Especially when it was first released, it barely worked, and when it did, it was buggy as hell. But as a fan of old school horror, I couldn't help but absolutely fall in love with it. Over time, after several updates, it's only gotten better, and has even added an offline single player mode, which is a huge welcome addition. Friday the 13th perfectly captures the feel of the movies it's based off of with its soundtrack, its atmosphere, and characters, which some are even pulled directly from the movie. And there's even multiple Jason skins to choose from. Nothing beats the feeling of slaughtering other players as Jason as you hear them screaming and cursing at you over the headset as they search for items to escape the camp. And playing as the counselors is dread inducing as Jason can suddenly appear anywhere and mercilessly hunt you down. While not a very refined game, I've had enough fun to lose entire nights on online matches. Number 12, Uncharted Lost Legacy. Anytime an Uncharted game comes out, it's almost guaranteed to land on my top games of the year list. The production value and cinematic quality of these games is always top notch, and Lost Legacy is no exception. It was originally intended to be DLC for Uncharted 4, and became so epic that it eventually grew into its own full length game. With Uncharted 4 closing the story of Nathan Drake fairly conclusively, it was a risky move making a game not involving its main character but it still manages to capture the humor of the Uncharted series, along with the ridiculously epic action set pieces that the series is known for. Uncharted Lost Legacy is more of the same, but that means that it's wildly entertaining, and with its asking price of $40, it's a steal, and belongs in every PlayStation collection. Number 11, Injustice 2. I'm a huge fan of fighting games, but I'm an even bigger fan of fighting games done right. NetherRealm Studios is the only developer that has perfected the formula of how to make a fighting game engaging for both single player and multiplayer, with a full-blown storyline that, while not as interesting as the first games, is still extremely entertaining, telling a very comic booky story filled with character appearances as Brainiac tries to take over the Earth, and all of Earth's heroes are forced to work together with this universe's evil Superman. Along with the story mode, Injustice 2 has individual character endings, a huge bonus for me in any fighting game. It's got excellent fighting mechanics and flashy super moves, and even DLC characters that are worth paying extra for, such as Sub-Zero from Mortal Kombat, Black Manta, and the Ninja Turtles. 
Number 10, Super Mario Odyssey. Everyone's favorite Italian jack of all trades, Mario is back. It's always an exciting time when us gamers get to go on another adventure with the Nintendo mascot. This time around, Mario has to rescue Princess Peach before Bowser can marry her, and travels to a variety of worlds in a giant mechanical hat, battling his minions. Odyssey is a mix of Mario 64 and Super Mario Galaxy, but instead of stars to unlock doors, you collect moons to fuel your ship, and instead of different planets, you visit different regions of the world. Mario is also gifted with a hat that's now alive, and a power that lets him take over different enemies, creating new game play experiences we've never had in a Mario game, along with some borrowed elements from A Link Between Worlds, amiibo unlockables, and plenty of costumes for Mario to wear. One word sums up this entire game. Fun. Number 9, The Mummy Demastered. This was the surprise of the year for me. A game based on a garbage movie, yet it ended up being outstanding on its own. Very loosely following the plot of the movie, The Mummy sends an agent from Mr. Hyde's Prodigium organization to stop the evil Princess Amonet in an adventure that feels like a high-quality Super Nintendo game, in the style of Super Metroid, Contra, and Castlevania all fused into one. Although it is a bit short, the low price point, awesome boss fights, and a plethora of hidden upgrades and items, and an amazing retro-inspired soundtrack solidly places The Mummy Demastered as one of the best games of 2017. Number 8, Horizon Zero Dawn. From the developers behind the fantastic Killzone series comes a brand new exclusive PlayStation franchise set in a future where humanity has been sent back into the Stone Age, living in different tribes, and cybernetic creatures roam the landscape. Horizon does a fantastic job keeping the mystery behind the story and reveals pieces of the past bit by bit as the game continues on, keeping you hooked until the very end. I can't even begin to describe how beautiful of a game this is. A deep story filled with great acting, a vast open world, a dramatic soundtrack, tons of side missions, different weapons that can be crafted, and a huge variety of enemies that require different strategies to take down. This is an extremely strong first entry into a new franchise, and one of the best games available on the entire PlayStation library. Number 7, Ghost Recon Wildlands. I'm a gamer that rarely goes back to games when new ones come out, but I've been playing Wildlands since it came out back in March of last year and it's become my go-to game when I can't decide what to play. The gameplay feels a bit basic and more arcadey than previous Ghost Recons, but that's what I love about it. It's easy to pick up and play after being away for a while, and the massive map has tons of activity to keep you busy for a long time. As the game progresses, the sense of accomplishment feels so satisfying as you slowly dismantle the Santa Blanca drug cartel and learn more about its key players. As you work to destroy its security, its influence, smuggling operations, and production. On top of that, it's only gotten better with constant updates, DLC additions, and even a bonus mission that forces the ghost to face the Predator. Yes, that Predator. Number 6, Sonic Mania. This game is a huge accomplishment, not just for Sega, but for gamers. After so many disappointments with modern Sonic games, it was time to bring back the retro Sonic experience, and Sonic Mania delivered with flying colors in what is essentially a fan-made game with the resources of Sega behind it that respects the past games and also creates brand new and impressive stages filled with boss battles against a set of new villains, the hard-boiled heavies, Metal Sonic, and Dr. Robotnik himself. The levels are filled with multiple paths containing secret bonus stages that award you with Chaos Emeralds after completing difficult trials. Sonic Mania is all about speed, and I really hope to see more of classic Sonic in the future. And as a side note, I would also like to recommend Overbound Games' fan-made Sonic game, Sonic Time Twisted. I didn't include it in the top 15 because it's not an official game, but make sure you check that one out too. Number 5, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus. One of the most classic first person shooters is back, and the sequel to Wolfenstein The New Order, The New Colossus, is every bit as chaotic, a brutal rampage through Nazi forces that have firmly taken control of America. In an age of video games so focused on multiplayer and online play, Wolfenstein 2 is a breath of fresh air that proves it's not a necessary component of a great shooter. 
being a purely single player campaign, and the care the developers took in the crafting a strong narrative really shows, with excellent performances from its voice actors, a villain that is as evil as villains can get, and a dramatic storyline that doesn't take itself too seriously, obvious from the first stage, which has BJ Blazkowicz blowing away Nazis as he rolls around in a wheelchair. Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus is an explosive, action-packed, cinematic adventure that embraces the violent nature the series is known for. Number 4, Cuphead. Take a 1930s style cartoon, add some run and gun gameplay, and ramp up the difficulty to ridiculous, and you get Cuphead. One of the most creative and visually impressive games that I have ever played. This game is clearly a labor of love with its use of almost extinct animation techniques that evoke that old time feeling, along with the soundtrack to match. The story involves Cuphead and Mugman accidentally making a deal with the devil and are now forced to go through multiple bosses in order to collect their souls and fulfill their end of the bargain. Cuphead is all about boss battles, and each one feels different from the last in terms of the look and the strategy. And the game is extremely hard, as it should be, so it is best played with a friend. I hope to see more of Cuphead in the future, because it's one of the most unique experiences available across all of modern gaming. There truly is nothing else like it out there. Number 3. Metroid Samus Returns. Take a Game Boy game that's honestly not very good and improve everything about it, while still keeping the spirit of the original. That's what Metroid Samus Returns does, retelling Samus Saran's Metroid hunt on the planet SR388 and recreating the experience from the ground up, bringing it from the original Game Boy and thrusting it into the modern world giving entire sections of the planet a fresh, colorful look. But other than just graphical improvements, Samus Returns introduces new weapons and upgrades, and original boss battles not included in the Game Boy game. The controls feel much more fluid, and the developers even went as far as adding detailed plot elements, tying the events of Metroid 2 directly to Metroid games released years after. Metroid Samus Returns is the perfect example how to remake a game, without it losing its identity. Number 2. Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, the PlayStation VR version. After several more action-oriented entries, Resident Evil 7 brings the series back to its roots, a game that provides a constant sense of dread and pure, unforgiving horror. It takes the series' common third-person point of view, thrusting the player into a terrifying first-person view as they traverse a world clearly inspired by the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but still retaining elements that keep it from losing itself as an entry in the Resident Evil series. Hands down, the best way to experience Resident Evil 7 is on the PlayStation VR and surround sound headphones. I can't describe how many moments had me terrified from being absorbed in this world that normally wouldn't have scared me if I was just playing it sitting in front of a TV. From hearing things behind me, to being afraid what was around the corner, to hearts topping jump scares, Resident Evil 7 is the perfect marriage of virtual reality and horror. Number 1. Assassin's Creed Origins My absolute favorite game of the year, Origins takes everything that makes Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed, and improves it while adding RPG elements that fit perfectly into the combat, making the game feel different enough to feel fresh, but still recognizable as Assassin's Creed. Equipment such as the Hidden Blade and Arrow Quiver are all upgradable with a crafting system borrowed right out of Far Cry, and the land of ancient Egypt is enormous in a graphical showcase that shows the sheer attention to detail that the developers incorporated here. The world is just filled with side plots that are actually important to the story, challenges, and so many discoveries that you can easily spend a hundred hours in the game before finishing the main campaign. When I played through this game, I had to force myself to finish the campaign because I felt like I was spending so much time doing extra things. And when I did beat the main missions, I still had plenty of content to go revisit. Origins also offers a dramatic story that details the origins of the Assassin Order, a storyline full of tragedy, full of betrayal, and heroism. This is a must-have for not just Assassin's Creed fans, but to new potential fans that are looking for an entry point into the core of the series. I cannot stress enough how pure gold this game is. Well, those are my top 15 games of 2017. One thing I would like to stress is that those are my personal favorites that I played last year. So your list will probably be completely different than mine. So I'd love to hear what some of your favorite games were in 2017. You can leave those right in the comments below. And I don't want anyone to watch this video and focus too much on the order of the games. I can already hear the outraged cries. How dare he not put Zelda Breath of the Wild as number one? If a game made this list regardless of what number I placed it in, it's a must play game. 
So make sure you start 2018 right and go start playing some games. Subscribe if you haven't already and remember to follow me on Twitter. This is Fabian. I love you guys and I will see you next time. Thank you.